Hey Valley Middle, good evening. Tonight we're going to be working on solving problems by making an organized list. Before we do that, let's start off with something just for fun. How many different flavors are there in Dr. Pepper? Hmm, one of my favorite pops. I'll get you the answer to that at the end of our lesson today. But first, our tar official target for tonight is 4.3a. I can solve problems by making an organized list on three. One, two, three. Let's do this thing. All right. Here's a question to ponder. Christian has two pairs of pants, a black pair and a green pair. He has four shirts, a white shirt, a red shirt, a gray shirt, and a striped shirt. How many different outfits can he put together? Well, hint, you need to make an organized list to solve this problem. All right, why don't you think about it? Now nah, you're not going to think about it. Let's get serious here. You just want to see what's underneath here. Well, there's no surprise, not yet. But I did like this picture of this guy hanging upside down. And he kind of looks like me when I was a kid, when I had hair. Except for, I, I didn't have the serious unibrow working like he does. He needs a little trim. All right, enough fun and games. So in order to solve this problem, you have to understand what an organized list is. It's any way that you come up with to share or to organize the data so that you can provide the answer to a question. So here's one way of doing it. You know he's got black pants, and he's either going to wear black pants or green pants. So I just put down black, 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 because he's got four shirts, right? Well, he could wear the black with the red, the black with the white, the black with the gray, or the black with the striped, right? He could also wear the green with the red, the green with the white, the green with the gray, or the green with the stripe. You get the idea. Christian can ponder over which of the eight possible outfits to wear. One cool way of looking at this is that there are two types of sh uh, pants times four shirts. You get a total of eight possible combinations. But the problem is, on this tricky target, we need to be able to list all the combinations, like black, red, black, white, black, gray, and black stripe. So here's how I do it to help save the amount of writing that one needs to do. Look how I set this up. And this is the typical closet question. Pants, shirts, you got black and green. You could even use B and G. And then he could wear black and red, black and white, black, gray, black stripe. And you could even use abbreviations here, R, W, G, and S. As long as you can explain to someone who asks you, well, what are those eight combinations? All right, so abbreviations are good. But I call these little tree diagrams because it's like one branch branching off into four. And this is your answer over here. And then I scroll down here and you can see that here's the two, the two different kinds of pants, the four different kinds of shirts, giving you a total. So for this target, you're going to have to show all the possibilities. All right. Well, I'm going to give you a shot with that type of a question right away. And this is the classic pizza question. Nikki wants to order a pizza. Oop, it says order. Ha! <laughs> Nice. Nikki wants to order a pizza. The crust choices are thin or hand-tossed. The meat choices are pepperoni or sausage. The vegetable choices are olives, mushrooms, or banana peppers. She wants one kind of meat and one kind of vegetable on her pizza. How many possible combinations are there? All right, let me give you a little bit of a hand here. I'm just going to grab a highlighter and highlight a couple things. Well, the meat, you've got it might help if we had one we could see. You got thin or hand-tossed crust. You got pepperoni or sausage. And then you've got olives, mushrooms, or bananas. So you've got two different kinds of crust, two different types of toppings, and three different types of vegetables. Why don't you go ahead and see if you can solve that question. All right, well, if you used my, followed my advice, you took and made a little chart like this. And so you had thick, I'm sorry, thin or hand-tossed, I just abbreviated T or H. Then you had pepperoni or sausage, so it could be a thin crust with pepperoni or a thin crust with sausage. And then from those, you could have uh, um, olives, mushrooms, or banana peppers. So I just made this little guy of three, and I copied it and just pasted it in because it could be thin with sausage, 
uh, and olives or thin with sausage and mushrooms or thin with sausage and banana peppers. So your answer is going to lie over here. These are the total number of combinations. So you've got two here, two types of crust, two types of meat, three types of vegetables, two times two is four times three. You have a total of 12 combinations and you could, if somebody asked me, I could say, yeah, this is hand tossed with sausage and olives. All right. So use abbreviations, but try to use these tree charts whenever possible. Good job. We're moving on to the next question. This is the dreaded family picture question. Test makers love making this one up. So the McBushy brows want to have their picture taken. How many different ways could they stand for their picture or arrange themselves? Okay, go ahead and try. Oh wait, you want to see the McBushy brows? I'm not sure if you do. You better get permission from your parents. Uh, yeah. I'm just going to call these thing one, thing two, and thing three. You know what I'm saying? All right. Well, we've had our fun. Let's see if we can solve this problem. The way you do this is there are three people. So you just take the number three, and you multiply it by two, and you multiply it by one. You count down three, two, one. That'll give you a total then of 3 times 2 is 6 times 1 is 6. There's a total of 6 possible combinations. So it's a real easy way to figure out how many possible combinations there are in one of these family picture uh, problems. But for this target, you've got to list the combinations. So I put down 1. It could be 1, 2, 3 or 1, 3, 2. Then I went to my next one. I went to 2. It could be 2, 3, 1 or 2, 1, 3. Get it? 3, 3, 2, 1, or 3, 1, 2. Therefore, all the numbers had a chance to be at the beginning, a chance to be at the end, and in the middle. Okay? So if it was four people, it would be no different. It would be 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And then you'd have to figure out all those different combinations and make a little chart to figure it out. So remember that one. Um, once you figure out the total number, you can go back and put together a little chart. But it's nice to know how many combinations there are going to be up, top, up front. For the test, we'll ask you not only how many combinations there are, but to show us your work so we can see that you can actually prove what all the different combinations are. All right, then there's one more type of question. That is the classic sandwich question. Test makers love making sandwich questions. We're boring people. we got nothing better to do than sit around and think about stupid types of sandwich questions. So I thought I'd write about Miss Holman across the hall there. Miss Holman has two kinds of bread, pumpernickel and whole wheat. She has two kinds of meat, bologna and olive loaf. She has two kinds of toppings, radish and cucumbers. If she only uses one item from each of those groups, how many possible sandwiches can Miss Holman make? I think a better question is, who wants to eat a pumpernickel and cucumber sandwich? Even better question, or better tip, if she asks you to switch lunches with her, tell her you're not interested. All right, back to the, uh, the problem. So she's got two different kinds of bread, two different kinds of meat, and two different kinds of topping. Pause it and see if you can figure out how many combinations and what they would be. Go ahead. All right, well, if you followed my advice, you made a little tree diagram, and you put a P for pumpernickel, and it could be bologna or olive loaf. Disgusting! Could be radishes, cucumbers, radishes, or cucumbers. So it could be pumpernickel, bologna, radish, pumpernickel, bologna, cucumbers. You get the idea. Same thing down here for the whole wheat. Whole wheat, olives, cucumbers, whole wheat, olives, radishes. Now there's a tasty sandwich. Not! Sorry. There's a total of eight combinations because she has two here, two types of bread, two types of topping, two or meats, and two types of veggies or toppings that could go on. Okay, I think you're ready for the target. Here it is. You have got, look at this lunch menu uh, to the right. How many possible combinations are if you get one item from each group? So you've got a couple of sandwiches, few sandwich types, a few veggies, um, a couple of different fruits, and a couple of different chips. See if you can figure out how that is. Remember, 
please use abbreviations like P, T, and C and create yourself a table, all right? Also figure out the combinations. You know how to figure out how many there will be right away. All right, the answer to tonight's trivia question, I'm going to scroll up just in case my picture's in the way. All right, the answer to tonight's trivia question, how many different flavors are there in Dr. Pepper? Well, it says right on the can. I don't know if you've ever noticed that before. There are 23 different flavors. Better question, how did Dr. Pepper get its name? Uh, a pharmacist named Char Charles Al Alderton created Dr. Pepper in 1885. Alderton worked at a drugstore in Waco, Texas, owned by Wade Morrison. Legend has it that Morrison named doc Dr. Pepper after the father of a young girl he was once in love with. I don't think I'll remember that, but I'll remember the 23 flavors. Just a little trivia to end your night. Thanks for listening. Have a good evening.